Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. This is the spot, the place, the coolest place on the planet, actually, where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. And today, we have the beautiful Larissa Troche. Well said there, April. Thank you so much for having me. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here. Well, Brains, let me tell you, this woman has got her hands in so much stuff. You think she was playing with Play-Doh. I mean, she is a business and income diversification mentor. That's a big $25 title. But basically, it means that she can coach you and mentor you into multiple revenue streams and how important that is. Because you can't just have one well. It will run dry. She's a realtor, a broker in the industry. She has her own podcast. She's an investor, and she works with small businesses. And I bet she's a whole lot of fun, too. So I want to ask her a bunch of questions about who she is beyond the veil and uh, really kind of get into it and see how she can up-level us. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell my brains a little bit about you, Larissa. Okay, you almost made me nervous. It's like, okay, I have to sit up straight now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... Here's the thing. Now, one of the things you asked me about was, quote unquote, my story. And I always felt I did not have a story. And that was kind of one reason I kind of hesitated to step out, if you will. But I will say, if I'm going to give myself any kind of label, I will call myself a global nomad. That mm. means I was born abroad. I traveled fairly extensively. Um, um, my, my, um, I was quote unquote an American born abroad. And so I have to have extra paperwork with my passport, mind you. Wow. But um, I also ended up joining the Air Force right out of high school. Mm. Yeah. And so when I hear about people who are born and raised and probably die in the same little town, I do not understand it. I don't get it. It is so foreign to me. Um, and I'd have to say those experiences really kind of helped shape me uh, who I am today. Um, even at this age, we will say I approach the world with wide-eyed wonder. And based on, you know, what's going on in the news, sometimes there's some tears involved, but, you know. Oh, my God, there's so much going on in the world. Entirely too much. But, you know, one world, one love, truth, justice, diversity, and tolerance. I mean, I think that just really kind of, that's what I live by, and I approach my uh, interactions with others that way, and I, I think it's important. And so I try and really hold my feet to the fire in that regard, so. Not exactly a story, but that's kind of me. Well, that's, but it's wonderful because it's authentic. So tell me a little bit about your life in the Air Force. Girl, I, my husband's retired military, so we're a military family, but I wouldn't have lasted through boot camp. Okay, number one, I'm um, disruptive. Uh oh. <laughs> and for them to try to break me down to build me back up, I'd probably start crying or go AWOL. Well, how did you, you go to Air Force. That was, did you say how or why? No, I said, how did you go to the Air Force? Because you, But you got to be smart, too, because the Air Force just doesn't take, you know, just anybody. You know, um, that's interesting because, you know, the four main branches of the military, we all kind of we do kind of divide those up a little bit. And I'm not going to I'm not going to go there. But, <laughs> um, you know, the Air Force, as I said, I, I joined it right out of high school. And that was primarily because, you know, I, I had grown up graduated high school. I wasn't ready for college, but I knew I was ready to leave home. Um, and I felt comfortable uh, joining the Air Force because I grew up in the Air Force. My father was uh, Air Force retired. And, you know, I remember I, I just based on the calendar, I mean, I graduated when I was 17. So I remember my 18th birthday because I really joined like, I didn't even get to have my summer playtime. They're like, hello, we got a spot for you. Come on down. I'm like, I'm like, but, but. So, mm. I went on down and um, my 18th birthday was spent watering the uh, general's lawn. How's oh, that gosh. for a celebration? I, I remember that because it was so out there. 
right? Um, but you know, you talked about boot camp, and that is nothing to sneeze at because you know they have you terrified from the minute you step off the bus. You don't know what's going on, and you don't know how how serious it is, right? Because I'm just going to tell you what you know after the fact because they have. I don't even know what they call. I'm going to call them ropes, but whoever the team leaders are that are yelling at you, this person has one stripe. I had no idea that that was quote unquote uh, nothing to be lose sleep over. But um, from boot camp, what I liked about it, what stands out, first of all, you have to march everywhere. It was in Amarillo, Texas. It was hot, <laughs> <laughs> and and the bugs was big as cats, probably. <laughs> you know, I am not one for the critters. I'm here to tell you. But, you know, they fed us well. You could eat a lot because you were working hard. Mm. Um, and then from, but uh, what do you call that? The obstacle course. That really stands out, right? Because, you know, when you see it on TV and you see it in the movies, yes, it is that scary. There's jumping, there's crawling, there's mud, there's walls, mm. and there's things that happen. And you're just like, phew, thank God I made it. Because you don't know till the end. And I'm just going to say you could see the people who did not make it. They make you wear this little cap of shame. A dunce um, hat. It, it, well, it, I started to say that, but it wasn't pointed, but it was a little blue terry cloth hat that just said you did not succeed. Wow. They call that washing out. But I mean, just to kind of wrap it up, my, my first base, which is really, again, I think an impactful experience was Korea. Mm. I mean, after tech school, you know, you have to go get trained in whatever your specialty is. But my first base, my first assignment was Korea. I, I'm, what? Korea? Mm. So yeah, I was over there busting out the map. Like, where am I going? <laughs> so you know and that was an adventure because you know first time far away from home I'm 18 and you know I, I totally get ready to tell tales out of school well, let me let me ask let you me a put a pause right somebody, there go ahead somebody uh somebody said something to me because my husband's in the military my son's in the military and they okay. say that it's brainwashing oh uh, they didn't like uh, you know uh, they're gonna be in this brainwash mentality but let me tell you something brains it is not a brainwash. It is a discipline. Exactly. My husband and my son are immaculate. They know how to uh, use tools. They know how to fix things. They're smart. They have the best education. We have continuous medical benefits. They bury you if you die. You get to see the world. You get a VA loan for education or property. You know, so uh, dip me in the water if it's about being brainwashed. Yes, it is a discipline and yes, it's a sacrifice too. Because if there weren't great people like you and my husband and others that committed to this, we would not be the land of the free and the home of the brave, okay? We would be over there ducking bullets like they are in the Ukraine right now. There'd be nobody to stand up for us or stand with us. And America, you know, we're, uh, we better pay attention to this You've mm -hmm. never, uh, for those of you who have never traveled, because I've traveled too, I've traveled to communist countries. There's some good to it, but there's some bad to it. But there is no kerfuffle. There's no chaos. You do what you are told to do. And if you don't, you go to jail. You don't get a get out of jail free card. You don't get to call your mama and your daddy to try to bail you out. You sit there and virtually rot on a some maybe naked balled up in the corner on a cement floor. And if you get some bread and water, you better thank your lucky stars. People don't have any idea of really what goes on in these other countries. So I'm really glad that you were able to go and experience these things firsthand and come back with your brain clean. <laughs> we are intact and you talked about the things that you learned. And that is one thing that I would say. I mean, it's a wonderful experience, especially to be that young. I mean, because it teaches you, teaches you discipline, it teaches you structure, and I still rely on those skills today. That's right. So it was, um, it was a positive for me. Now today, I mean, I'm not trying to send anyone to war, but for me, it worked out. Maybe it was a different time, but as you say, the the benefits. I just missed the G, uh, GI Bill. I did not get the education. I had to pay for that on my own. Mm. But um, I've definitely used that um, the VA loan to buy multiple pieces of property over time. Obviously, mm -hmm. but yeah. So those are key benefits, and I I don't I don't think a lot of people think about what you you know you put in the work, you put in the time, That's but right. you have some additional benefits. And some people aren't that lucky. Some people don't come back with a right mind, well, with all of their limbs, you know. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and that's a big gap when it comes excuse me when it comes to women mm -hmm. in that field because it's a different skill set to deal with a woman that has um p 
PTSD than a man. You know, she could have been sexually assaulted. She could have been raped. She could be a mother. There's a whole lot of other things. And so there's a huge gap there. So when you left the military, you springboarded and you went into business. Tell us about some of the businesses that, you, that you've touched on. Oh, you know, I I actually, um, I married young. I did, I did everything young. That's why I'm still <laughs> such a baby. <laughs> I know, I know. So, you know, I got married young. So my I, I, you know, I pooted them out early. So I actually did the whole nine to five thing before I became entrepreneurial. And again, it's like when I take a job is what can I contribute, but what can I learn from this job? And so one that stands out before I got into real estate was a uh, company that did, uh, actually they, they did um, parking management, which sounds, woo, that's exciting. But, you know, it taught me about, um, you know, the bid process and the opportunities that are available for people of color. It's getting the certification and that type of thing. So it's, again, everything, I think, kind of works together when you apply yourself to take the lessons that will be uh, multidimensional and, and have different applications. So, but I was always like, I, first of all, I did the easy stuff, right? I'm so good at paperwork and I would just start it off that, that way. But um, I, I, you know, you kind of, kind of chomping at the bit a little bit. Cause you know, when you listen to people trying to give you orders, if you will, or instructions, you're mm -hmm. like, oh, oh. so chomping at the bit kind of helped me take that leap of faith. I, I went into property management be, with purpose. That's the one job I did on purpose mm -hmm. because I wanted to learn the back office side of it. Not right. because I wanted to sit on a property all day, because no, that's not, you know, my cup of tea. Um, but learning the back side of it, the back office side of it is like, you know, the the contracts, the, the uh, management agreements, and that side of running the business side of it. And so I actually did not end up sitting on the desk very long. After six months, I was promoted twice, but um, it kind of led me into, one, you know, creating my own um uh, boutique property management firm, if you will. And so picking mm. up a client who does vacation rentals, again, things you don't ever hear about until you stick your toe in the water and you're like, hmm, you know, right. this makes a whole lot of sense. And so that was actually where I got, actually, that was the second one. The first one was a consulting, right? Because I always say, when you're starting a business, you start with what you know. Right. And I knew contract management. I certainly knew the certifications, but having, you know, put myself through school for my uh, bachelor's in human relations and the MBA, the business side of it, <clears throat> learning strategic planning and operations, you know, all businesses need that. That's right. And well, Larissa, like let me ask you a quick question though about uh, <laughs> real estate and property management. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause this rental world is so different now. Mm -hmm. You've got these short-term rentals, right. you've got these Airbnbs. Right. Um, but how do you get a joker out? I've got some friends that can't get people out. Now, during COVID, there was a moratorium. Mm -hmm. You know, people were there. They got forgiven on their rent and this, that, and the other. But it's such a long process. How can people kind of, you know, it's it's hit and miss when you vet someone that's going to move into your property. Because, of course, it's like, you know, a person on a job interview. They're going to they gonna send a representative the best that yeah. they have. Sure. Okay? But it's then the when honeymoon, they the there, dating they, phase. Right, right. But then when they get there, they're all authentic self really comes out. What are some of the things that you could uh, suggest that people kind of look for two or three things when you're interviewing someone to rent your property? You know, and obviously I don't know the people that you're speaking of directly, but I would say what happens with mom and pop or individual landlords is that they, they lead with their heart, whereas rental property is a business and you need to treat it like a business. You have to take time to do that background check. And really that is only 30 bucks and you charge that to the applicant. So you need to find out about their criminal past, which is not so much a big thing, but more so their eviction history. What is their rental history? Mm. So their evictions will, is called a judgment. So that will be on file. If there's any judgment, you really don't want them because they've already shown who they are. They're not really going to pay. Mm. Um, and then also their credit and or income. Now, a lot of places will have or should have you know, they have to, ha you have to have standards and requirements. You can't just say yes to the next cute person who comes through and has a nice smile and they're good at schmoozing. Schmoozing does not pay the rent, right? Right. So you need to make sure that they uh, say, for example, your standard should be at least two times, if not three times the rent in order to rent your place. Now, I know you said Airbnb, but I'm speaking generally. We can come back to Airbnb in a second, but, you know, check their, their uh, landlord history, would their landlord rent to them again? Some of them will not talk because they don't want to get sued, but some of them will spill the tea. 
And those mm-hmm. are the ones you want to mm-hmm. ask some probing mm-hmm. questions, right? So do the background check on landlord evictions and their credit. Um, do they pay their bills, right? So you can get a thirty dollar credit report, and it's gonna there's like a lot of paperwork, and they're gonna tell right. everything, right? Um, do they and have check collection? their social media? I want to see how you get turned up. You know, that is very much a 21st century thing to do. But yes, that is one thing. But I'm saying do your legwork. But also, yeah, social media can tell you way more than you ever wanted to know. But you and you certainly want to find out if they're, you know, that lampshade type story. You want to avoid those because you do not want all those parties in your house turning up your property. Mm -hmm. And that's probably, I would say, more important, especially if you're going to do short term rentals, because now a lot of people use Airbnb because they have that quote unquote a uh, million dollar liability plan, but you know, there's a lot of work getting those $2 out of Airbnb if there is an issue. So you want to do your screening ahead of time. And sometimes the um, the individual landlord does not do the legwork and then they pay for it on the end. Some folks get lucky until they're not. So do your homework. Ahead and of you know, time. And it's and it so hard that much. Hmm? I feel, I feel I have empathy for the person that, you know, might have been a domestic violence situation and she might have had to leave from place to place and she got evicted and she doesn't want to tell me all of her business or maybe she lost her job during COVID. There's a lot of reasons, but brains, it's just like with anything. Have a conversation and be honest because you're putting this person at risk. This is their property. This is their livelihood. This is their income. And they will get angry with you, you know, and they can make your life miserable. And you sitting there with your kids and the sheriff being going to come and put you out. It's not a pretty thing. But along those same lines, my parents had properties and they had tenants there that lived there 10, 15 years. That was an absolute blessing. So it's a trade-off. But like you said, it's very important that you do your work. So you are uh, very thorough. And I appreciate that. You're very disciplined. You're structured. You understand the business side of it. Now you've moved into mentoring others and small businesses. How have you put all of this puzzle together to uh, create the, the perfect picture for yourself? So the thing about it is, first of all, I, I love working with people who are trying to better themselves. And, you know, there are some people who, um, who will never ask for help, I'm, you know, because it's, it's hard to ask for help because people start to feel like a failure. But at the same time, if, they're, if they want to grow, I call it grow and become because you cannot stay in one place, right? But what happens is, you know, I believe in quote unquote relationship marketing. And that is, you know, you're out there networking and you talk to people, you help people. I love making business connections and introductions. You know, essentially you give before you get. Um, and, and that's how I've actually gotten most of my clients, my bigger clients is that, you know, they remembered when I helped them way back when. And so, um, and then they come back to me more than once. And so that's the best kind of relationship that I like to create when I'm working with clients. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I even though I don't like in one of my repeat clients, you know, we, I helped him with his business and I, and I sold him investment property, you know, so win, win, but it's because I don't know anything about, say, uh, janitorial work specifically, but I do know operations. I knew, do know best practices. And being able to teach those concepts or to make them understandable so that they are actionable. Um, and so, you know, you just break it down and you meet people where they are. Because in particular, that particular person, he is not, um, you know, he immigrated here. And he has done everything he can he's been super successful because he works super hard you know got to do that part yeah. but working gotta, with him gotta is show a, up and put in the work yeah work is with is again it, go back to real estate you know it's you got to get the property you got to get the loan you got to s- sign over your firstborn and give your blood type you got to trust people you got to make that mortgage they don't care if it was covid or your great aunt betty died they want their money so again, you got to show up and do the work in whatever arena it is. Absolutely. And you know, the thing that I will add to the, to the um, real estate, here's the thing, you know, having worked in property management for so long, one of the best practices, if you will, that I took away from that is they call it replacement reserves. But when you own that property, at some point, you're going to have to repair that property. And so what you want to do is you want to start in the beginning and start putting away money each month so that when you have to get that HVAC or that roof or what plumbing, God forbid, you need to have some dollars so that you're not having to run back to your credit. So you look at, say, whatever the price of the house was, and maybe it's like 1% a year, like a $400,000 house, you put away $4,000 over the year 
years so that, you know, as things come up, you have that money available mm-hmm. so that you don't have to be uncomfortable right. or right. the repair gets worse because you couldn't pay for it. Right. So, you know, again, like I said, and you, you don't want to be a slumlord. You cannot be a slumlord because it's going to come back to you. And that will make it more difficult when you talk about how can they get someone out. First of all, I didn't talk about the documentation. You must keep excellent, pristine records. And if push comes to shove, you don't ever want to be the one they have on six o'clock news because you didn't take care of your place and you have your documentation because things happen. You know, people are people and we want to, I want to say, approach people with the best intentions, but you do want to take care of business too. So you, um, you have children. How many children do you have? Those two. Boy and a girl or? Two boys. Two, two men. Boys. They're grown. Two, two <laughs> men. Okay. What did you pour into those men about structure and discipline from a woman's perspective? Because you know what? This is my philosophy. It's hard for a woman to teach a man how to be a man. You know, it was a challenge um, because I would say that, you know, you don't know anything until you grow up. Right. You don't know <laughs> and what you don't hindsight, know. You know hindsight is twenty twenty. Girl. And so, um, you know, it was, it was different because my, my, I actually met my husband in the uh, air force, if you will, Mm. but we, we definitely came from different backgrounds. Um, and he was a different, um, I'm just way talking out of school, but we, we approached life differently because his life experience was different from my life experience, you know? And so not always being on the same page made it more of a challenge. And so, but I will say that my, both of my sons certainly know how to cook and clean and, and take care of their, their home and take care of their person. They know how to hold on to a job. Now they did not go the college route, which, you know, mom is still, still pulling for them, but know. you know, um, but you know what, sometimes you can have as many degrees as a thermometer and still not know what the temperature is. Okay. You can, and, and I'm like, not trying to make them into many images of myself, but I do want the it's just like anything else when I'm working with my clients, when I'm talking to my kids, I need you to be informed. Right. Absolutely. So you can make the best decision that you can make based on the information that you have. Absolutely. Stay out of trouble. Um, you know, we, we, what do we want? We want our kids to be healthy, happy, and strong. Um, and so, yeah, we're talking, I'm having the money conversation. It took a minute, but I will say as a parent, one of the blessings was when they started reading because reading is transformative. And I think that gets you out of your comfort zone. It helps you see what else is out there and it ch- helps you see additional mm-hmm. viewpoints. So when they started reading, I was like, Ooh, you know, it's kind of like a sigh of relief. Okay, maybe I don't have to do it all. But now I'm trying to have the money conversation to get them interested in investing right. and being able to understand what it is they're investing. And in. I just throw money after the, the latest hot tip. You know, you need to mm-hmm. tip. So right. anyway, that's what I'm working on. That's what I do with my daughter too. You know, I really kind of get into her head and I said, baby, you have to learn how to make money work for you. You don't have to be out there chasing the carrot. You got to work smarter, not harder. It's a different time now. You can get get a little penny stock and watch it grow. I've done it. And I have been just beside myself. I get so excited. Set some goals for myself and achieved all of them already. And it's just now March. That's a little, yeah, that's a little nerve wracking because now I have to challenge myself even more. Putting yourself out there. Well, you did that and you started a podcast. What you talk about on that podcast? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you know, I, I enjoy working one-on-one with people, but again, to help the most people, you have to kind of put yourself out there and talk about a podcast. I call it, you know, it's a conversation. But what I'm really looking at is I'm, everything that I do, I'm talking to, quote unquote, my ladies, if you will. And that is women who are 40 plus because, you know, we've had a little living on our belt. Maybe they're an empty nester or who knows what's going on. But I'm still talking about the same thing. You need to diversify your income. You need to continue your leadership and personal development. And you definitely need to increase your financial confidence. So we talk about a little bit of all that. And of course, all about encapsulated, if you will, in the business side of thing, because I 200% think you need to have multiple income streams and you definitely need to have one or three businesses or whatever number you happen to choose, just diversify your income. And that's primarily the type of conversations that we have each week, so. Well, I love it. You bring in subject matter experts or that people have done that because I do that, Brains, okay? I'm... I dip my pole in more than one pond, business-wise. 
<laughs> business. Let me, let me clarify, clarify that a little bit. Okay. okay. But again, you know, I'm a brand ambassador. I run the podcast. I have a little uh, retail gig that I do. And I love it because I love people. I like to get out there. I like to see what's going on. I like to, you know, get high on my own supply. And we're talking about buying things where I work. <laughs> Got to clarify because she'll say, "Oh my goodness, you, you, you know, April, we're, we're, April's we're dipping her poles in places, and she's <laughs> and she's getting high." So you have to clarify that. So, you, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So let's ask you some fun questions about you, real quick. Fun questions? Yeah, some fun questions. If you were an animal, what okay. animal would you be? Guess what? I actually have an answer for that. What? I am going to be a red panda. A red panda. Now, the thing of it is, I had, once upon a time, a muse, a mentor, a person of inspiration, and I thought that he was mighty darn exotic, and I dubbed him a red panda and haven't mm. looked it up. I thought I could be a red panda. Wow. Okay. What's your favorite color? Oh, now you're making it hard, because I like all the jewel tones, but at once, once upon a time, I would say it was red and I'm going to gravitate towards red. Towards red. So red is killing is is killing it for you right now. What's your favorite food, Larissa? Oh, now you look. Now you can look at these rosy cheeks. You know that I, I might know. Have, That's what I'm saying. I'm a I, I might have more than one favorite food or so. I'm just saying. But I will very seldom turn down a chocolate chip cookie. I'm just saying. Ooh, you cannot man. mess up a chocolate chip cookie unless you try really hard. So I'm I'm willing to check it out. That's pretty good. What are three things that you absolutely cannot live without? Well, my kids, you know, heartache and joy, you know, we have to have those kids. Um, and definitely I'm going to have to say music because whether you feel sad or whether you feel oh, happy, girl, there's a song. song for you. Yes. Yeah, um, now that third one might be tough. Um, I'm just going to go with the sun. I, I kind of blossom in the sun. I love my sun and, Feeling the rays. I, I feel better no matter what's going on if the sun is shining. What brings you the greatest joy? I don't want to hear about the kids. Personally, what brings you the greatest joy? I would have to say, um, you know, th you, there's been some life journeys. And what's become important to me through these journeys is, is relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So when I see someone... I'm going to use the word grow and become. That's just my phrase. But when you can see that light bulb go off mm -hmm. and they have turned the corner and they have learned something new and they're so proud of, oh my gosh, I get it. Um, that's probably a joyful moment, especially if I've been the the impetus behind that. Right, then I'm right, just, right. I'm on cloud nine. Y'all can't right. help me. It's so, that, you know, it's, it's that light bulb aha moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that inspires me to keep aha. going. What brings you to tears? Oh, everything. I have become such a baby, especially these last two years. I cannot watch TV without the Kleenex by my side. Mm -hmm. But I um, I hate when people are hurtful to each other because that is so not necessary. Right. I, you know, if you remember at the beginning, I said one world, one love, truth, justice, diversity, and tolerance. I so believe that. I don't understand why folks out there being a knucklehead. You know, we're on this big planet. It keeps trending. Why can't we all play together and act nice? So, um, I am pretty much a crybaby these days because yeah. um, I don't understand the pain and why people are so hateful to each other. Wow. It makes me sound a little wimpy, but that is the fact. Well, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it brings me to tears too, to see people, uh, he, the, the guy was standing out and I'm, I'm a, a sucker for the homeless. I am, mm. or should I say not the homeless, the disadvantaged and overlooked because they overlooked him. The man had his dog in the cart with him. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, he said, uh, uh, ma'am, can you, can, can you help me out? Can you help me out? And I looked at him and I looked at his dog and his dog looked like he was eating better than he was. You know, they do care, take care of those animals. They, I mean, that was his companion and I've, you know, had many dogs. So I know what that means. And I went down in my purse. I gave him a nice crisp 20 and I tell you, he goes, Oh, now me and my dog can eat. And I was he probably like, feed wow. the dog before himself. You're right. 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 Probably, you know, that's selfless love. And, you know, people do it for animals, but they won't do it for their brothers or their sisters. And it'll come back to you twofold. Don't walk past people like you don't see them, like you don't know. You don't know what their story was. 
they might have been high on the hog and something happened to them. And you know, they just I, fall on fall on bad luck. They might have got evicted. <laughs> as the saying goes, life happens. And I have met some people on the journey because when I first made the transition, I was changing industries to uh, property management. It was affordable mm -hmm. housing um, in San Francisco. And I saw some things that you cannot unsee. Mm. And so two things came out of that was, you know, because again, most people, you know, they just want to be seen and they want to be heard. I mean, I, I was an interviewing an applicant, if you will. And I noticed that, you know, she was formerly homeless or homeless at the time. And she had, I know it's unhoused now, pardon me, but, um, you know, she had lovely hands and she told me in her past life, she was a hand model, which of course I'd never oh. heard of such a thing, but, um, you know, she had lovely hands, even throughout the things that had happened, the challenges that she was overcoming. Um, but, you know, when I, and, and that's why even when I'm giving to people who are, are, you know, asking for assistance, you know, I'm really focused on the women because I think they have it harder. And I feel like, the, you know, the things that can happen out there. So, you know, one of the things I was inspired to do, because I saw I, the things that you cannot unsee, I already told you that, but, mm. you know, you put together a little Ziploc bag with some feminine products and some money and some whatever so that you know because things are going on out there and it i just turns, it turns the women that are out life there. around it, it turns yeah. my life around to be a blessing because you know my mother said aren't you glad that you can bless instead of needing to be blessed you know so don't take it for granted don't and it's all um it's just a humanitarian effort Mm -hmm. diversity equity and inclusion means to meet people right where they are that doesn't necessarily mean black white or brown straight gay you know uh transgender it doesn't mean any of that it just meet people where the rubber meets the road and if you can you can but if you can't don't aggravate the situation exactly stop being you know, a hater don't exacerbate exacerbate it it's, isn't that a word? it's, it's, not, necessary. it's, it's not necessary it's not necessary so tell my brains how to get in contact with you. I'd love for them to, you know, come under your mentorship. And I like the fact that you're a mentor and not this coach. Mentor just seems more user-friendly, really. <laughs> it, it, really. Well, I mean, it, it seems like, well, it seems like you have a buy-in. And that's what I think you're looking for is someone that is really ready to level up and commit to this. Coaching seems so um, authoritarian, you hmm. know. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to coach you into this. You know, we're going to win no matter what, you know, you know, this, that I want to, I want to the ebbs and flows. I want to bob and weave. I want somebody that is really going to not try to change me, but let me evolve, pour into me, bring out the best qualities into me instead of, you know, I see these coaches and they're really trying to create a mini me and that's not what I want. So I like the fact that you consider yourself as a mentor. So how do we get in contact with you and get, uh, you know, get tuned up on that podcast? Thank you, April, for asking because um, I'm happy to share with you, ladies, if you are looking to diversify your income and increase your financial literacy, please check out pinkpassportsociety.org. That's my online membership community to help women as they uh, on their journey. But in particular, I certainly hope that you will check out Divas, Diamonds, and Dollars podcast. That's all about the business of life well lived, where we're again talking about your income and your business. And then lastly, if you just want to find me online, my uh, Instagram handle is larisa.troach um, on Instagram and probably Facebook. So, and LinkedIn, let me just throw it all out. <laughs> so, uh -huh. you know, Larisa Troach, you can find me. There's not too many with the same last name. I have discovered more Larisas though. So make sure you put that Troach on there. Really? Well, I like that Larisa Troach. It seems a little, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's right well do it queen thank you so much for being here on the edge brains i need you to go in and handle your business i need you to like love share and subscribe one more time like love, love share, share and subscribe because your brains and we're trying to take you to that next point to that zenith point so you are limitless and your money is just flowing like water thank you so much for being with me today i appreciate you and value you thank you april it has been a pleasure all right. Peace out, brains.